outshine them all. Amen. All right. Turn us to uh, 1 Samuel 18. 1 Samuel 18. It's a good thing I know what I'm preaching from because I got 2 Samuel written down. And I want to read uh, just uh, verse 14 there tonight. I didn't get to tell this choir, I was busy doing something over there this morning, but I didn't get to tell this choir how much I appreciated their singing. I try to tell them that each, each week because I get a real blessing from the choir. And I get a real blessing every week. And uh, it was good this morning, very good. It's good tonight, praise the Lord. So uh, appreciate the choir and pray for our choir director that he'll get back with us real quick. And Sunday's just a good day, isn't it? Amen. Just a good day. All right. Uh, 1 Samuel uh, 18, 14. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, our Father, we come in thy presence tonight. And just thankful for the peace that we have in Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just ask you now that you will just draw close to us and help us to draw nigh to thee. Because the Bible tells us if we will draw nigh to thee, that you will draw nigh to us. And that's what we need more than anything else, is to be close to thee. And Father, we pray that you'll help us to be much in thy word, to study thy word, to be the people of the word, and to know the precious word of God. Fill us with thy precious Holy Spirit. Bless us every day. And Lord, we need thy guidance. We need thy protection. We need thy help. So we ask you, Lord, just to be with us. Now bless this service. That it'll be all that thou dost want it to be. And Lord, just bless it to everyone that's here. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want to preach tonight on the subject, the battles we fight. Uh, David had fought Goliath preached on that the last time I preached on Sunday night and he had fought Goliath and become a hero in Israel and because of that Saul had taken David into his court to serve him and uh, Saul's son Jonathan David and Jonathan became as close of friends as, as you will ever see anyone become uh, some people would call them soulmates but they they had a special uh, relationship. Uh, these were two good men, and they met, they liked each other, they grew to, to love each other. Uh, the Bible says that Jonathan so loved David, he, he, he did a sign of friendship. Uh, he gave him his robe and some garments, and his, he gave him his bow and his sword and his girdle. Now, these were, this was something you don't just give people. This is something you don't just give even a close friend. This was something you give to somebody that you, that you value very highly. So Jonathan was a friend of David. It was a friendship that lasted all through Jonathan's life. Jonathan died before David did. But they were, they were close friends. Jonathan defended David and, and watched out for David even when Saul, his father, tried to kill him. So they were, they were close friends. So David did one thing here as we go through the life of David. He made a friend. Oh, how important friends are. And close friends are just to be valued so much. Uh, David's life was going the right way. Saul, or, or excuse me, Samuel had anointed him to be king. The Lord had sent Samuel to David and uh, his household and had anointed David to be king. Uh, David had uh, fought the great battle with Goliath and, and defeated the giant. Things were just going uh, David's way. The Lord's plan was working in his, his life. What a wonderful thing when we can experience that in our life, to see God actually working things out in our life and know that we're in the center of his will, we're, we're doing what he wants us to do and, and just see his blessings. You ever been in that situation where you can just see his blessings, you can just feel his blessings? That's what was happening in David's life. Next, David received a promotion, which was another step in the right direction. Saul noticed David was a great warrior in his army and he uh, and a wise man, so he made him an officer in his army. And, and uh, 
put him over men. And that, that sounds good, except the women began to sing that Saul killed his thousands and David killed his ten thousands. And Saul was the king, and he couldn't stand this from an underling. And he became insanely jealous of, of David. And he began to plot against David. Uh, Saul wanted to kill David. And from that day forward, Saul had set himself against David to find a way to get rid of him. When Saul saw that the Lord was with David, he feared him and he gave him another promotion. Now that again sounds good, but it wasn't real good because it made him, uh, he, he had made him a captain over a thousand, but he did that in order to send David out into battle in hopes that David would be killed because he said it's better that the Philistines kill him than I do. And he promised him his oldest daughter, uh, Mirab, and uh, he, that didn't follow through, but the reason he was going to give her to him was, again, a plot to kill David. Later on, he did give Michael, his second daughter, uh, to David as a wife, but he, he, he wanted her in David's household to spy on David, and he wanted her to tell him what was going on. It didn't work out because she fell in love with David, and she was on David's side as well. And so uh, it didn't work out like Saul wanted it to. But here were things, here was David's life. I want you to see this. Here was David's life. He'd been anointed to be the king of Israel as a young boy. He had fought Goliath. And God had blessed him with a mighty victory. And now he was in Saul's court. Saul had seen that he behaved himself wisely, had given him a promotion, and then gave him another promotion. And it just looked like things were going great. But the king had turned against David. So many times the devil comes in when things are going well. We really have to be careful when we're down because we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. And we really have to keep our, be careful when we're up because that's when the devil likes to attack us the most. Now that's the story of this chapter. I've given, you, I've given you in just a nutshell the summary of this chapter. So I guess I don't have to preach. But I thought I'd go ahead. Somehow I figured you'd probably figure that out. David trusted the Lord and did his job in a faithful manner. Verse 5 says, And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him, and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. David was the least man, you might say. You might say he had the least seniority in Saul's army. Uh, Saul had taken him into his court, and Saul had different jobs for him and used him in the military. And everything he used David for, God blessed him. Because one of the reasons that God blessed David, we're told here, is David behaved himself wisely. That is, he stayed right with God. And he was careful to follow God's word, to be honest. And whatever Saul told him to do, to do it to the very best of his ability. He be behaved himself wisely. Saul saw this. The army saw this. The people saw this. They saw that David was genuinely a good person. That's a wonderful thing. That's character. Boy, do we need character today. How do we need to have character? People saw how David did his work. The Bible says he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of David's servants. The lesson in this is to do right. That's, that's something we need to practice in our life. In the big things, to do right. In the big decisions, to be honest and make the right decisions. To pray them out and to be wise about our decisions, to study God's word. I hope that you're the kind of person that when something comes up, you say, what does the Bible say about that? And you search through the scripture to see what the principle, sometimes that exact situation is not in the Bible, sometimes it is, but if that exact situation is not in the Bible, there is a situation that gives us a principle or a verse or, or scriptures that give us a principle about that situation. We need to follow God's word 
And when we have a decision to make, we need to pray about it, study the scripture about it, and make the decision God wants us to make about it. We are to do right in the big things. But let me tell you, the little things count. David, whatever Saul told him, if he told him to go, if he told him to play his harp, he played his harp. And he played it to the best of his ability. If he told him to go run an errand, David never murmured or complained. He ran an errand. He could have said, well, I'm the guy. I'm the guy that killed Goliath. I don't need to do that. No, no. Whatever Saul gave him to do, big or small, he did whatever the king said for him to do. You know, a faithful worker, is respected by most everyone. I've worked in places and I've seen people who were not faithful and I've seen the boss just kind of, you know, duck his head and, and turn away because he knew this guy wasn't going to do what he ought to do. Go check on his job, had to go check on his job all the time. And I've seen the boss have people who he knew he could send a person down there to go do this and he didn't even go down there to look because he knew it was going to be done. That's the kind of person God wants us to be. He wants us to have that kind of respect. A faithful worker. In Colossians chapter uh, 3, verse 23 and 24, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men. Now that's talking about, that's talking about the little task, the big task. It's not talking about being in church so much as it's talking about being on our job, our secular job, or wherever we are, and whatever we do, to do it as unto the Lord. The other, the other part of that verse uh, says, knowing that the Lord, knowing th that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Now, if we want to succeed, we need to do our best in every situation. That's, that's because that's why when we get saved, we're different from the world. And God wants us to be different. We're His ambassador. Everywhere we go and wherever we are, people look at us and say, that's a Christian. And God wants us to set an example in everything that we do and the way that we, everything that we are. He wants us to set an example that people will look at us and see Christ. Well, you say it won't do any good. Well, people will never notice, you know. Well, let me tell you something. You look at David's life and you look at some of the other people's lives in the Bible and you see that it was God who caused people to notice them. And he, he caused events to happen and circumstances to take place that people would notice him. It wasn't David's idea to go out there and fight Goliath. God set that whole thing up so David would get the recognition he needed so he could become the great king of Israel later on. And God moves things around. I've seen him move things in my life. I've seen him affect people in my life. He affects people in your life. He's way ahead of you. You don't know what's going to happen five years from now, ten years from now. God's already making plans for your life. He's already moving people. He's already moving events. So your life will be right. All we have to do is just get a hold of his hand and follow him and, and, and be uh, honest and, and be the kind of person that he wants us to be. Colossians uh, 3.25 says if we don't, we're in trouble. It says there in Colossians 3.25, but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of person. To disobey the Lord is a sin. And to not do our best in everything in life is a sin. What do you mean? You mean if I don't do my job and, and I, I have a job that's hard and I don't like it and, and they don't treat me right? You mean if I don't do it? Yes, it's a sin. We don't see it that way. But that's the way David saw it. And that's why God blessed him. And if you go back and, and you look at uh, Joseph, we've been studying the book of, we've been studying the, the life of Joseph a little bit in Sunday school. And we've talked about how he went to prison, how his brothers mistreated him. And, and everywhere Joseph went, wasn't it amazing? Joseph had character. And Joseph lived for the Lord. He just kept living for the Lord no matter how bad things got. He just kept living for the Lord. And you know, it's amazing everywhere he went, he went over to Potiphar's house and Potiphar made him head over his house. 
Potiphar got mad at him because his wife lied about him. They threw him in jail. They put him down there in jail, and it's amazing. The, the head of the prison put him over all the prisoners. And there was, there was the, the dreams that they had. Uh, who was it? It was the butler and the, and the cook, and, and God caused them to have dreams. The next thing you know, it, it took a while, what, two years? It took two years, but the next thing you know, there was Joseph standing in front of Pharaoh. God had placed him in a place where he became second in command of all of Egypt. God, used, God moved a whole nation for Joseph. God will do that for you if you're the right kind of person, if you've got character, Amen. if you're honest, if you'll swear to your own hurt, if you'll live as the Lord wants you to live, God will be on your side. You see, uh, God wants to bless us. He wants to be good to us. He wants to fellowship with us. And I preached about that a little bit this morning, but how important it is that we stay close to him every day. That's where we get our strength. We get our strength from prayer and reading the Bible and being close to the Lord and, 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 and obeying him. Obey the Lord. And when a, when a decision comes up, Ask yourself, what does God want me to do here? Pray about it. Study God's word about it. Uh, I, know, I know a young man who always does his best at his job. Uh, it seems, at least. And I've heard about him. And he was, a, he was in the Air Force, and they gave him a job. And uh, one of the reports came back from the people who were over him. He's a little guy. He's uh, uh, in our family. And uh, he's a little guy, but man, I tell you, when you give him a job, he just goes at it with everything he's got. But the report came back to the family that uh, he was too small to be a fireman. He wanted to be a fireman. He was too small to be a fireman. But because he worked so hard and tried so hard, they made him a fireman. They noticed him. You see, when we do our best, God blesses us. Secondly, David continued to trust the Lord, and the Lord protected him. In verse 14, and David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Saul became intensely jealous of David. David fought the Philistines, the enemies of God, and God will bless you. I preached on that not too long ago. Fight the enemies of God. Stand up the enemy. For, stand up against the enemies of God. Pray about things and and uh, and try to do right. Stand up against the enemies of God. And the Lord, the Lord blessed David. On every part of his life, David gave him victory. Isn't that great? Isn't that great to have victory in your life? To know, to know that you're right with the Lord. And to know he's on your side. And to know that your life pleases him. And he's blessing you. Uh, the women sang. Uh, Saul killed his thousands. David killed his ten thousands. Saul became insanely, insanely jealous. And the evil spirit came upon Saul and he threw a javelin, tried to pin David to, to the wall, tried to kill him. But you know when a person fights the Lord's battles, the Lord fights his battles. Dr. John R. Rice, I, I used to take that paper, The Sword of the Lord, and I remember him saying many times, in that battle. He made a deal early on in his ministry with the Lord. He said, Lord, I'll take care of your business if you'll take care of mine. In other words, I'll always put you first. I'll always live for you. I'll sacrifice for you. I'll surrender my life to, the, to you if you'll bless me. And he said God had always blessed him. God had always honored that covenant he made with the Lord. Uh, I knew another man uh, who was a Christian young man doing his job. He was kind of second in, in, in command of a, uh, a factory. And uh, he began to get recognition from the owner. And the owner really liked what he was doing. He did some good things. But there was the person who was just over him. And the only thing that I can figure out is that person became very jealous of him. He was afraid, he was afraid that this young man was going to jump over him. And so he began to talk to the boss and tell him lies. And actually just out and out lied about some of the things that he did, trying to get him fired, and actually it worked. 
he, he succeeded in turning the boss against him, and, and the boss did fire him. It hurt this young man. It hurt his family. Very, his dad still hurt over that today. And they tried to get him. They said, get a lawyer. Fight this out in court. Don't, don't let them do this to you. But he said, no. He said, I'm going to turn this over to the Lord. I'm going to let God take care of it. And they, he did. It took some time. It took two or three years. He had to take a job, and then uh, he took another job, I think it was. But, uh, you know, he's working at a job now where he's the head of the factory that he's over. And he's got a boss that just turned his own house over to him, Amen. just treats him royally, and just, just has complete trust in him. You see what God will do when you trust him? Amen. Here was a, here, you know, the, the, the Bible says here, David behaved himself wisely. How do we behave ourselves? Do we live for the Lord every day? Or do we try, to, do we try you know, to inject ourselves in there? And we, we want to do it our way. Let me tell you, our way is not very good. Amen. It never seems to work out. But when we do it God's way, and we behave ourselves wisely, the Bible promises there's going to be uh, blessings for us. So it's a great thing to have faith and see God work. Part of the Christian life is overcoming temptation. We need to understand that. There, there's going to be, the devil's going to tempt us with sin. The devil's going to tempt us with things that we want real bad in our life. He's going to tempt us to lie and not tell the complete truth. The question is, are we going to behave ourselves wisely or are we going to give in to that temptation? The devil's going to tempt people some of the, with fleshly sins. The temptation's out there. I had a man tell me one time, I was talking to him about the Lord. He said, oh, preacher, he said, you don't know the temptations I go through. I said, maybe not, but God does. You see, the question is, the Bible promises God's blessings to overcomers. Read chapter 2 and chapter 3 of the book of Revelation to the seven churches. The promises there are to those who overcome. We must, we must become strong for the Lord, not give in to, to Satan's temptations. And part of the Christian life is trials and tribulations. We're going to go through problems in life, and we're not going to understand why. We're going to say, why, God? Why did you put me in this particular place at this particular time? Why am I being treated this way? Why are people not being honest with me? Why are people, why are people uh, doing things to me that are wrong? I don't deserve this. Well, they did that to Joseph. They did it to David. And we need to understand that that's part of life. The question is, how will we respond? Will we do what God wants? Or will we do what the devil wants us to do? Acts uh, chapter 14, verse 21 and 22. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and, had, and taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch. I like, this, I like these verses. Verse 22 says, Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that was and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. I want you to listen to that. That we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. God promises you when you get saved, the road's not going to be downhill. God promises you he will bless you. God promises you he will walk with you and be with you and strengthen you if you will lean on him and trust in him and, and behave yourself wisely. But he tells you that you're going to go through troubles and trials and tribulations. What he wants us to do is to, is to, have, uh, to lean on him. When we come to those things and we don't understand them, he wants us just to dig in and he just wants us to live for him and do what we can to serve him. Uh, God is faithful. Uh, and he takes care of his children. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1.9 says, God is faithful by whom 
ye were called unto the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ our Lord. God is not just faithful to some of his people. Did you know that? He's not just faithful to David or Joseph or Barnabas or Paul. God is faithful to all of his children. He loves all of his children. And he is faithful. He will not fail you. If you will live close to him, if you will, when, when trouble comes along, if you will trust in him and just keep on trusting in him, he will not fail you. God is faithful to all his people. Uh, he will take care of you. Uh, Brother Nathan preached about Elijah here a while back. What a great sermon. And remember how Elijah said, I have been jealous for the Lord God of hosts. I alone am left. Man, he felt like he was all by himself. And, and really he kind of was. But the Lord said, no, you're not by yourself. I got 7,000 haven't bowed their knee to Baal. I'm, I'm still right here with you. You know, the most important thing, I got 7,000 haven't bowed their knee to Baal. But the most important thing is I'm here. God was faithful to Elijah. He'll be faithful to you. The, to be faithful to the Lord, and he'll be faithful to you. God is good to all his children. The last thing tonight. David trusted the Lord even when he was cheated and mistreated. Uh, verse 30 says, When the princes of the Philistines went forth, and it came to pass after they went forth, that David behaved himself more wisely <laughs> than all the servants of Saul, so that his name was much set by. You see, David had been treated badly by his king, and he's going to get treated a whole lot worse as we go along through this. But he'd been, a, he'd been anointed to be the king of Israel. He'd been promoted. Uh, the Lord had blessed him. But... Along with those blessings came troubles and trials. Saul became insanely jealous of him. His king hated him and tried to kill him. He was promised to marry uh, the king's eldest daughter. That didn't work out. She's given to another man. He did marry Michael, the king's other daughter. He found out both of those times, both of those times that Saul was promising him, you're going to be in my family and you're going to be exalted as the son-in-law of the king. He was just setting him up to send him out to battle to get him killed. Now, that's deceit. That hurts. Don't you know that hurt David? He'd serve Saul. He loved Saul. He loved Jonathan. He married Saul's daughter. And then to find out all of that, all, all that, that Saul had set up was just a trick, just a form of deceit to get him to go out and fight the Philistines so he could be killed because Saul knew the Lord was blessing him. And Saul knew that David was the man was going, God was going to use to replace him. And he was trying to get him killed. You know, I, I, I just thought, what did David do? Now, the Bible doesn't say this. Let me tell you what I think David did when he got in trouble. I think he got closer to the Lord. I think he felt like he said, I need the Lord, and he just got closer to the Lord. What do you do? The world goes out and gets a beer. The world goes out to a movie. What do you do when you're in trouble? It's time to get close to the Lord. He counted his blessings. Boy, I tell you what, praising the Lord, counting your blessings, and, and just stopping and thinking back over your life, all the good things God's done for you. That'll lift you up. That'll strengthen you. I think he rededicated his life to the Lord. Ever so often, I have to rededicate my life to the Lord. I just, I've been saved a hundred times. Now, you only get saved once. You understand that? But man, I've got on my knees and I've just told the Lord, save me, save me, Lord, save me. I want to be close to him. I've rededicated my life over and over and over to him. I think David rededicated his life to the Lord. He made sure he was living according to God's will. That's so important. That's so important. The devil's just working on us, working on us, working on us. That's why he throws troubles and trials at us to get us not to trust God. If he can just get us, if he can weaken our faith and get us not to trust God, 
to think that God's not on our side, to think that God's not hearing our prayers and answering our prayers. Let me tell you something about your prayers. And Lee, I know about this. The answer is in the mail. Amen. You understand what I'm saying by that? Amen. It takes time for the spiritual battles to be fought and the things to go on and people's lives to be moved around and the things, circumstances to be moved around so God can answer our prayers in the right way sometimes. Sometimes it takes a little time. Sometimes it takes a lot of time. Some prayers God answers immediately. But you know what I'm talking about. There's times it takes time for God to answer a prayer. And that's when the old devil attacks us, isn't it? He, he, he's not hearing your prayers. He'll send somebody to discourage you. I've had people, I've had people to talk to me in a way that discouraged me. Well, David encouraged himself. We'll get to that later on. But you see, what we need to understand is that we need to trust God more in the valleys. We need to get closer to the Lord. So, uh, and we need to examine ourselves. I, I tell you what, folks, I, uh, let me tell you something. I wonder sometimes if any of us are Christians. I go back and I study, I study the life of Paul and Peter and, and uh, the early Christians. These were people who gave up everything. I mean, they didn't have fine houses and they didn't have nice cars. They gave up everything to follow Jesus. The Bible says in Hebrews, they roamed the streets in sheepskins. I may, we may be called upon to do that. I've been praying about something this week that God would spare us from. But I'm not strong enough to go through some of this stuff. And then I thought, that's not true. It has nothing to do with my strength, does it? has to do with God. He's strong enough to get me through it. He's strong enough. He's strong enough to get this church through anything that comes along, if we let him. So when we're in the valley, it's so important for us to examine our life. And if our life is not right with God, let me tell you, let me tell you, not being in the center of God's will, not, not being right with God, hurts us. It defeats us. And it keeps God from giving us the blessings he wants to give us. And he just decided, I'm going to trust God. That's a decision you're going to have to make a lot of times, young people in life. You're, God's going to bring you to places and let you be in place. He has to try your faith. Your faith has to be tried to grow and to become strong. He has to bring you into valleys that you don't understand. He has to bring you and let you face despair that you will understand that He is really there and He will not fail you if you trust in Him. But you're going to have to decide. Faith is a decision. I'm seeing that more as I go through life. Faith is a decision. I decide I'm not going to let Satan de defeat me or discourage me. I decide I'm going to trust the Bible. I'm going to trust God. And I'm going to let Him take care of the situation. I think that's what David did. I think he decided he's going to trust the Lord. We fight all kinds of battles in life. We have victories and we have setbacks. Uh, life does not work out like you think it's going to work out many times. Young people think they can just plan their life. I did. I thought I'd plan my life and, you know, it'll turn out the way I want it to. They don't do it that way. It don't work that way. So we have, we have victories and we have setbacks. Sometimes a seeming victory turns out to be a setback. It will be like David. It'll, we'll see the Lord working in our life. And it is the Lord. And we see things going well and things are going well. And, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, things change. The devil all of a sudden just knocks us down. Sometimes a seeming setback turns out to be a blessing. God will take setbacks and make them victories for us 
if we trust Him. You see, the secret to the Christian life is to believe and live wisely. David, be, be, listen to this, David behaved himself more wisely. Notice that through this chapter as you read it. Go home and read it. Notice David behaved himself wisely. David behaved himself wisely. David behaved himself wisely. And then the last verse says, and David behaved himself more wisely. He just kept getting closer and closer to God. William Booth, a great man who started the Salvation Army, gave a Founder's Day message to Christian soldiers. He was a great man. I mean, he had stood on the streets of London, had bricks thrown at him, and hit him. Here was a man that knew when he went out there on the streets to witness he was going to be attacked and attacked viciously. Here was a man who turned it all over to God. And he spoke to his workers and he said to them, this is, this is the way you ought to live. He said, faith and works should work together. The first step should be faith. The second step should be works. Then it's faith, then it's works then it's faith, then it's works, until you cannot hardly tell the difference between the two. And you move as one, faith and works, faith and works, faith and works. Behave ourselves wisely. That's what God wants. That's what works. That's what brings the blessings of God. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for this night and for this time with each other. We ask you to draw us close to thee. Pray that thou wilt bind Satan. Pray that you'll protect us and bless us all the time. Pray that you'll lift us up. and Lord, that you'll just give us joy and happiness in our life every day. Help us to behave ourselves wisely, to have character, to live for Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.